So we had this rally in the middle of COVID-19 at the MTA board where they're having virtual meetings. Bridget, I, and Eric went and cased the place two times to even figure out what we're doing, how we're gonna plan this, and how we're gonna really bring this place to life. We worked with a, de a designer who created these gigantic posters. We also worked with a contractor who created these posts that are big that we can put the posters on. We wanted to recruit as many people as possible. Tried to have drum and chant. Ain't no power like the power of the people cause the power of the people don't stop. Say what? So we can make that fill the space with noise. And then we tried to invite as many uh, allies to speak. The other way that we decided to bring life into the space is that we gave everyone a BRU shirt to show a good strength in numbers. The day of the rally, I was worried about the turnout. I was worried about how many people were gonna join us. If we got lower than 25, that would have been embarrassing. <laughs> so I'm grateful that we had about 30, I think almost 40 people out there with yellow shirts. The shirts were a very important piece because yellow is such a bright color that it stands out and it makes everything look bigger. Chris Mathis, who was one of the founders, he said, the goal is to not be humiliated. So that's the highest objective, is to do something that doesn't make you look terrible. We had organized this sort of sea of yellow, partly to expand, and also we found a space small enough, we framed the rally. We knew it was gonna be 25 at the least, probably 40, 45 at the most, but we constructed something where even 25 people would look big enough. So that was one thing, that we pulled it off. The second thing is Channing was in leadership, and that's a big thing. And 20 years later, they have cut more than a million hours of service. So today, what's on the agenda is they're trying to cut service by 20%. build people into leadership and Barbara and I have been the kind of public leadership of the Bus Riders Union for a long time and now the segue was to um, Channing and to Bridget. The reason why I'm now leading the work and organizing back on the buses and trains is to not only collect surveys of you know actual bus riders experience but to start really really building up the Bus Riders Union again. So we're gonna do some chat for we're gonna get on the bus, get on the bus, get on the bus, just fight for the bus. And this work is really important to me because, you know, it's like we're taking on this whole institution, right? We're taking on MTA and we're telling them we deserve free public transportation. This is the first rally that I have ever led. I was in charge of all of the logistics of the rally, as well as the recruiting, as well as uh, along with Eric, you know, thinking through the political line and the agenda and the program. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it was really hectic. We have a smaller team than usual. Uh, and so we each had to take on five or six pieces of the, rally, of the rally, right? At my age and understanding, I have a few medical issues that I am struggling with that, that's challenging. It has eliminated uh, some of the things that I'm able to do, but I'm still here. I uh, was even thinking about that at our last rally. My role there, what it was there and what it used to be has diminished, but I'm, I'm still a fighter. We're here today serving MTA with a pink slip that says urgent, no fares, overdue, long time coming. And even though Channing was in charge, I knew the greatest thing that I could do was to support him. At the Strategy Center, we don't shoot our old leadership. They just move over. You know, Barbara and I were still there. We both spoke, but we weren't chairing the meeting. It was Jenny was chairing and he did a great job. I think the ultimate goal for me was to really rally up and liven up our people more than anyone else out there to really announce to our people that the BRU is back. We're trying to really build something. MTA is targeting black folks. Black riders only 90% of the ridership, but they receive 50% of the tickets and 60% of the arrests. And we don't think those numbers are just purposely, right? We think the police on the metro buses and trains, they're specifically targeting black people and then criminalizing them for not being able to pay that $1.75 fee, right? 
And you know, the whole purpose of having this rally was to let MTA know that we're watching them, that we're still here and we're gonna hold them accountable. But it was also to let bus riders at Union Station know that we're back and that we are gonna stay here until we can have a system that works for everyone. You know, the social welfare state has not meant so much to me as it does right now. As I stand waiting for a bus and looking at my neighborhood, looking at people counting their coins to see if they actually have enough to get on the bus, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm so glad that even with the strategy seminar, I am able to have a bus pass. But also to understand how long we have been fighting for an equitable first-class bus system and fighting for free public transportation. The MTA owes us free public transportation. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna put them on the spot and say, you know what? Your fareless public transportation is overdue. So we studied this book at the Strategy Center, Playbook for Progressive, 16 Qualities of the Successful Organizer by Eric Mann. And quality nine is completes the circle from start to finish. And so I think we did that. <laughs> A successful organizer has to begin the conversation with goals and objectives. The first objective was just the numbers, and we succeeded at that. The second was we thought we ran it well. And third, I think everyone was just happy to see, oh my God, that you don't have to say we're back. That's what the rally was about. Oh, look at all this nice yellow shirt. Oh, the bus ride is getting back. My work is based in LA, but I know I'm doing my work internationally, where the work I'm doing with the Bus Riders Union is just a small part of a whole movement worldwide. There's so many protests, you know, around the Black Lives Matter and the police killings. There's so many people starving, people struggling to survive. Just during these times, it's so hard because you have a government telling you, no, <laughs> like, we need police. We need the military. No, we don't need affordable health care. No, we don't need affordable housing. Something that I'm constantly thinking about is how do we flip the script to not fund police or the army, but how do we fund our people, our communities? So it's a constant battle where we as organizers are constantly trying to have them understand that. We deserve more and we need to fight until we get what we need and what we want. I just realized that the main audience for that rally was us. And I think as an organization, we felt encouraged. Now we gotta go back in front of the trains, in front of the buses, and say, hey, we don't have to say we're back, but essentially we are saying that. 